This recording will go over the NUR 1000 Week 9 Lecture. We're going to review prioritization notes because I ran out of time last week. Um, so we're going to review the prioritization plus taking strategy notes that are on Canvas for you. We're also going to look at leading, managing, and delegation questions um, and assignment making questions. And then we're also going to be looking at uh, figure, graph, and audio item types on the NCLEX. There we go. Okay. And before we look at our prioritization questions um, or strategies, I just want to remind yourself not to be comparing yourself to other people and remind you that everyone is on their own unique journey in life and definitely your own unique journey in nursing school. So don't do the comparison stuff. Just, just travel your own journey. So it might maybe the classroom setting isn't your thing and the lab and clinical is or vice versa i've seen a lot of students write about they sort of have slower processing time than other people be true to yourself true to your own journey not everyone completes the nursing program at the same time not everyone has the same um, ease with test taking or dealing with people or being in the clinical setting so I just really think it's important to focus on your own journey and not worry about other people's when you're going through nursing school. Okay, so you have some prioritization notes that are you can find up by the PowerPoints on Canvas. And they just summarize some test taking strategies in terms of those prioritization questions that you might see. So prioritization, what does it mean? Um, highest priority versus lowest priority the sickest patient would be your highest priority patient and the healthiest least demanding the patient who needs the least amount of attention would be your lowest priority patients a lot of times NCLEX style questions will have four parts they'll give a patient age like a 38 year old male uh, gender male a diagnosis with a sinus infection and then this modifying phrase, so who has green drainage from the nose? And a lot of times it's the modifying phrase that's most important. I can remember as a student taking a question and the patient was like 98 years old and had had four heart bypass surgeries and you know whatever the scenario was and let's say she was in there with a, um, a broken bone. Uh, I really struggled with that prioritization question because when I looked at the list of people, the 98 year old who had four heart procedures, she seemed like she was likely gonna be the one to die first. I thought maybe I should go with her. But a lot of times this age, the sex, the general uh, problem aren't as important as this modifying phrase. So when you see NCLEX style questions like this, make sure you spend time looking at the modifying phrase. And sometimes it makes sense and it's related to whatever the disorder is, such as this one, you got green drainage and you got a sinus infection. Okay, not that's not too crazy, not too, too unexpected. But if you have something like a diabetes patient who has pain in the right arm, we usually don't see pain, maybe some peripheral neuropathy, but not pain per se in, that, uh, in the arm of a patient with diabetes. So like that doesn't match the um, diagnosis that was listed. So that I sort of flag that answer option when I'm trying to pick out a right an the correct answer. So when you get those questions that give you scenarios with age, sex, uh, diagnosis and modifying phrase, pay special attention to the modifying phrase. Remember your Maslow hierarchy, physical, then safety, then feelings, and then of the physical, use your ABCs. For prioritization, for more complex questions, ask yourself, is this patient stable or unstable? Unstable is going to be your priority patient because that's the patient who could die quicker, right? So that'd be your higher priority. So some things to look at on this, these prioritization notes is I printed out some or I wrote down some terms that could be used for a patient who's considered stable. So maybe the question has the word stable in it, or maybe it's describing a chronic illness versus an acute illness. So a chronic illness 
would be more stable than an acute illness. So they've been out of surgery for a while. They maybe had a local or regional anesthesia versus a general anesthesia. Um, labs can be abnormal, but not critical. You might see phrases like you're getting ready to discharge them, preparing to be discharged. They've been here for four days, you know, and there's really no changes. So admitted greater than 24 hours ago, but no significant changes to their status. Uh, unchanged assessment would be stable. And then experiencing those typical expected signs and symptoms of a disease for which they were diagnosed. Even if they're things that we don't want, so the patient with kidney stones has pain, we don't want our patient to be in pain, but we would expect a patient with kidney stones to be experiencing pain. Those are things we're looking at with stable patients. Unstable patients then, the question could actually have the word unstable. It might describe an acute illness, so something that just suddenly has occurred for the patient. More recent post-op, having general anesthesia, critical lab values, statements like they're newly admitted or newly diagnosed, not ready for discharge, but newly admitted, newly diagnosed, higher priority patient, admitted more recently. Huge, a change in assessment. We saw a practice question about that. So. Um, anytime something has changed, we'd want to flag that. That sounds like something we might need to follow up on. And if they're experiencing unexpected signs and symptoms. All right, so just some reminders. Don't prioritize based on symptom severity rather than symptom expectedness. So severe pain isn't always prioritized over mild pain. An example, like I said, kidney stones can cause pain. But that's expected. You got a patient with diabetes and elevated blood glucose who experience, who's experiencing pain, that's not expected. So that would be considered unstable. That would be the patient we'd need to see first. Always unstable, regardless of whether it's expected or not, would be hemorrhage, high fever, worry about seizures, um, high hypoglycemia or an unstable number, and then pulselessness or breathlessness, even if we expect it for whatever the patient's going through. Last little test taking tip there is if in distress, don't assess. Remember you, the, the question needs to provide evidence that the patient's in distress. And if you're thinking this patient doesn't need me to get more information telling me they're in distress, they need action. That's when you would pick an intervention type answer option versus an assessment answer option. Just a friendly reminder for all of your nursing courses, except for this course in UR1000, um, your grades are ca calculated first by looking at the 96% exam category. That, your exam average has to be over 78% to then add in the 4% category, which usually will raise a student's grade, but it could bring it down. Um, so make sure you're monitoring your 96% category to make sure you're above that 78% and then look at what your total score is, including that 4%. All right, so this week we're talking about delegation. So what is delegation? It's when you're asking somebody else to do something. And delegation is guided by the Nurse Practice Act and other practice uh, limitations, and as well as agency policies and procedures. The nurse holds ultimate accountability for any delegated task. And delegation is part of the NCLEX Safe and Effective Care Environment Client Needs category. So who to delegate? Uh, we want to delegate stable, predictable clients because the RN has the higher scope of practice. So the RN should be having unstable patients while, um, let's say, like that LPN would have the stable patient. Um, the, and we'll talk a little bit about what the RN is doing versus the LPN versus the aid. So sickest, the RN should see first, um, then we're sort of comparing stable and predictable. That would be care that the, the RN could delegate. So sickest would be physiological or physical problems versus psychological or feelings problems. Sickest acute problems versus chronic problems. Sickest unstable, and we've talked about some cues you might see that indicate the patient's unstable versus stable. 
And then finally, unpredictable would be considered sickest or someone the RN should be seeing versus predictable. Assignment making is sometimes things that we see in NCLEX style questions. So who are you gonna assign that this, this new graduate RN that just floated to your floor and has never worked on your floor before? Or who are you gonna assign the LPN to care for of these four patients? Or which of these tasks would you ask your um, aid to, to complete? What would you delegate to the aid? The nurse who delegates the task or the activity maintains accountability for the overall care of the client. Only the task, not the accountability for what's being um, asked to be done can be delegated to another. The NCLEX is a national examination using it all across the United States. So it uses general guidelines. They're not agency specific. Sometimes our students who work in healthcare have a hard time with this because they will go to answer questions and they think about what do I see being done at work? Um, these will be general uh, guidelines used for delegation. They won't be state or agency specific when you're answering test questions. Some principles to consider with delegation or assignment making. Safety, never select an, an option that could potentially harm the client. Who are you being asked to delegate to? And we'll go over some tips of what you might see, what's appropriate for that delegation. What tasks are appropriate? Think about the knowledge and degree of supervision needed. Uh, have the individual you are delegating to restate the task. Make sure they understand what you're asking them to do. Communicate confidence and provide feedback. Provide a timeline of when you want that delegated task to be done. And maintain continuity of care when possible. So a big thing for the RN is that that person is going to need to follow up on any delegated task. So you might ask the aide to get a blood pressure or a set of vitals on a patient, but ultimately it's the registered nurse's responsibility to follow up, see what those vitals were, assess the vitals, and see if any action needs to be taken. All right, what can the aide do? You might hear that position described in questions as aide, UAP, which is Unlicensed Assistive Personnel, or AP, Assistive Personnel. But what the aid can do here, they can take care of stable patients, they can feed, record I's and O's, do routine stable vitals, get uh, some, spe some specimen collections like urine and stool, help with ADLs, ambulating, grooming, basic skin care, bathing, range of motion exercises, positioning, transport, and transfer. They can also reinforce teaching that the RN has provided previously. So they're not allowed to teach, but if the RN has provided teaching like you need to put on your shoes before you get out of bed and walk, the aide can reinforce that teaching. What can the LPN do? The LPN can collect data but cannot assess. Now the LPNs might say, well that's phony like because I'm assessing at work, but per the NCLEX and per scope of practice, the LPN can gather data but can't assess. So they can listen to lungs and document that they heard wheezing, but it's the registered nurse that needs to look at the, the documentation or whatever the data is and assess it and determine if the patient's getting better, getting worse, if they need to call the doctor or, or whatnot. The LPN can reinforce teaching, but remember it's the RN's job to teach. They can do routine skills, pass meds, um, select IV meds if they're IV certified after the RN gives the first dose, monitor IV flow rate, and they're going to be assigned chronic or stable patients. Lastly, what the RN can do, assess, educate or teach, evaluate outcomes, um, start IVs, give IV meds, take care of pre and post-op patients. They're responsible for receiving and giving report, and they take care of unstable patients. You have a delegations notes handout under the important information canvas module. Go ahead and look at that. It contains all your test taking tips for delegation type questions. I'm gonna let you look over this uh, slide for time management on your own because I'm running out of time. Go over, just a reminder, some of your NCLEX style questions can actually have figures. It might ask for you to indicate where you're putting ECG leads or where you would listen for the point of maxim, maximum impulse. 
it might give you a strip and have you identify the dysrhythmia or maybe what the treatment might be. Your answer options could be graphic or it could be an audio thing where you're listening to lung sounds and have to pick what advantageous lung sound you're listening to.